One World Trade Center, the tallest building in the Western Hemisphere. And on the 102nd, 101st, and 100th floors, there is an observation deck known as One World Observatory, where you can get fantastic views of the entire city. You can see all five boroughs of New York City. And today, I'm going to take you up to the very tippy top so you can see the views from One World Observatory and find out, is it a tourist trap or totally awesome? But first, I'm going to need you to click subscribe so you never miss a New York Minute. Hi, I'm Megan, a licensed New York City tour guide, and today we're going to explore One World Observatory. Very first thing we have to do is go through security. So I'll see you on the other side. The first thing you do after you walk through security is you walk through this hallway. And this hallway feels so magical. The way that I interpret this is on the right side of the hallway, you see a video and the video is showing you the past. Here it shows you the year 1625 and different structures that were here in New York City near and around the site in 1625. Um, and it'll kind of go through history. We'll see St. Paul's Chapel. We'll talk about St. Paul's Chapel again uh, in a little bit. It is the longest continually operating building in New York City. And then on the left, you have these mirrors and the shapes of the mirrors uh, are reminiscent of the outside of One World Trade Center. And then if you follow me this way, this is so cool. Um, cameraman, AKA my fiance, David, pointed this out. Here you see the future. So you've walked from the past to the future. And this is the completed World Trade Center site. And then from there, we walk into these rocks and these rocks. This is the bedrock of New York City. This, call, this is called schist. You can have as much fun with that as you want. New York City is built on a giant pile of schist. And this is what anchors One World Observatory and One World Trade Center into the ground. And that's really important. You'll see all these facts about the schist. Um, the schist is a really strong rock. And because that rock is so strong, that's why we can anchor a giant skyscraper like One World Trade Center that is 1,776 feet tall into the earth. This is a sky pod. It's the elevator that takes us up. We're gonna start in the schist. And in less than 47 seconds, we're gonna get to the observation deck and look at this. You'll see time change. We start at the past. Here's St. Paul's Chapel. That chapel's actually older than the United States of America. Uh, and we're gonna watch the city be built up around us as we get up to the top of One World Trade Center. So this is One World Welcome Trade Center. Welcome to One World Observatory. Being built up around us. Coolest elevator ride in the world. I never get tired of riding it. And then we're gonna exit on floor 102. Once you get out of the sky pod, you actually enter this room where we're gonna watch another movie. So we watched the movie in the elevators, and now we're gonna watch a movie here. And this movie, I call, always say that this movie is the best movie. <laughs> the ending of this movie is the best ending of any movie you'll ever see. I actually had a five-year-old on one of my tours that said that the ending of this movie is even better than Finding Dory. So let's watch.
that video. A fun fact about the movie, um, right before you saw the view, the rhythm of the music to that movie is actually set to the rhythm of the average walking speed in New York City as well. So it's giving you an aural experience as well as a visual experience. Um, here on the 102nd floor, uh, they have these uh, sort of like iPads that can help give you tours of the city. However, one thing that One World Observatory has that no other observatory has is real live tour guides walking around on floor 100. So we're gonna go down to floor 100 and see what we can see there. We watched the movie on floor 102. We came down to floor 101 and our goal is to actually get off of floor 101 as quickly as possible to get to floor 100, which is the main observatory and that's where we're gonna get the spectacular views. I did want to point out, however, that they do have a cafe, a restaurant, and a bar here at One World Observatory. And the food is actually really, really, really good. So if you're looking for a restaurant that has spectacular views, check out One Dine at One World Observatory. But right now we're going to head down to floor 100 so we can get the great views on the main observation level. So follow me. We have made it to floor 100, the main observation level. And look at this view. This is what you pay the big bucks for. I have seen this view hundreds and hundreds, if not thousands of times. It never gets old. And this view is one of the reasons why One World Observatory is my personal favorite observatory in New York City, because it has the best view of the Statue of Liberty. Now, usually in my videos, the Statue of Liberty looks like a little tiny dot. You can actually see it from One World Observatory, and you can see all the boats going around the harbor, and it just feels so refreshing. If you're looking for an observatory with a great view of the harbor, this is the place to go. One World Observatory has 360 degrees of unobstructed views. You can see all five boroughs of New York City from One World Observatory. And this is one of my favorite windows because from the window you, you can see, um, and we probably won't get it all on camera, but you see the Statue of Liberty, you see the Verrazano Narrows Bridge, and that bridge connects the borough of Brooklyn on the left to the borough of Staten Island on the right. If you look straight down, you see Manhattan. So right here, we see three different boroughs, Manhattan, Brooklyn, Staten Island, and then there's another island out there. I always think it's kind of shaped like this uh, weird, really round ice cream cone. That's Governor's Island. Governor's Island is technically part of Manhattan. It's open in the summertime and you can go there. You can go glamping. You, the Jazz Age lawn party is held there every year. Super fun. You can only get there by boat. So if you wanted to know more about the view, like I said, there are tour guides that walk around One World Observatory so you can ask them or you can actually book a private tour. And I strongly recommend that you book those private tours because the tour guides that work here are the most knowledgeable, I can talk, the most knowledgeable tour guides that I know in New York City. And you will learn so much. You'll see this big circle. Lots of people just like to kind of stand in front of the circle and take photos, but this is known as City Pulse. And City Pulse is really cool because from time to time, the tour guides that work here at One World Observatory will actually give shows inside of the City Pulse ring. And it's this multimedia presentation that will teach you all about the city. And every week, they actually create a list called the Buzz List, which is all about awesome stuff that's currently happening in New York City. So if you're visiting and you're trying to figure out, like, are there any festivals? Are there any parades that I should be attending? The guides here will know, so you can either ask them or watch one of their City Pulse shows. And this is one of the things that makes One World Observatory so unique. The only observation deck that has City Pulse. One of the things that's so beautiful about One World Observatory is that it is part of this building, One World Trade Center, that replaced the original Twin Towers that were destroyed in the 9-11 attacks. And this building, in so many ways, is a symbol of hope, showing us that we can rise like a phoenix from the ashes, stronger than we were before. So I always like to come here after visiting the 9-11 memorial, which you can actually see 
from One World, World Observatory, you will see one of the pools. The actual memorial is consisting of two reflecting pools. The North Pool is just too close to us. It's really hard to see. But you get a really great view of that South Pool, and it's just glistening. It's so beautiful. And then you see the, the East River, you see the borough of Brooklyn, and if you look back down, you'll see a building, it kind of looks like stegosaurus bones. That is the Oculus, which is a shopping mall and a train station. If you stand in the middle of it, through that glass spine, if you look up, you will actually see One World Trade Center framed into it perfectly. So it becomes an eyeball looking towards the future. And then uh, right next to the Oculus, if you look a little further out, you'll see what looks like a park and there's a, a little tiny church in that park. That is St. Paul's Chapel. St. Paul's Chapel is the oldest continually operating building in New York City. Uh, it is older than the United States of America. And when those original Twin Towers fell, the debris destroyed uh, all the other buildings of the World Trade Center complex. Most of the buildings around us had the windows blown out. But that tiny little chapel where George Washington prayed survived without a single shingle being knocked out of place as though it was held up by a string of God. So St. Paul's Chapel became known as the little chapel that stood. I found one of the tour guides. We're very lucky. This is Emma. She is actually the president of the Guides Association of New York City. If you don't know about the Guides Association of New York City, like visit ganyc.org, ganic.org. Best place to book a tour. Um, but she's going to show us uh, something really cool about the building. So here's some facts about One World Observatory up here at One World Trade Center. You see, right now we're at 1,254 feet. We're on the 100th floor. The height, total height of our building is 1776, like the year of the Declaration of Independence. Then the height of our building to the roof line matches the height of the original Twin Towers. In fact, our footprint is the same size as the base of one of the original towers. So we have our memorial to September 11th, a memorial to the Twin Towers, built right into our structure. And we're up here in the observatory between two levels of mechanical floors. So you can see our whole building right here, that square footprint and the roof line will recall the original towers and give you a sense of what was here and what we lost. So if you want to learn more about the building, about the history of the World Trade Center site, about New York City in general, you want to find one of the wonderful tour ambassadors like Emma here. I'd love to have you up here, so come on over and I'll help you out. Just ask for a tour ambassador. We're always ready to help. It's so cool. On the east side of One World Observatory, you will see the gift shop. At the gift shop, you can get all kinds of souvenirs, ranging from t-shirts to Christmas tree ornaments, and then possibly the most important bit of information, behind the gift shop, you will find bathrooms. And they actually have large, nice, clean bathrooms here at One World Observatory. So super important and great bonus here at One World Observatory. This is a northeast facing window. From here, we can see all the way up to the northern tip of Manhattan. You can actually see the Bronx beyond Manhattan. You also can see Queens and Brooklyn, and we have the East River here. So we can see four of our five boroughs from this window. From the northeast window, the, the building that always stands out to everybody is this glass building that looks like it's made out of glass Jenga blocks. That is 56 Leonard Street. It's an apartment building, and the idea is it is supposed to look like a suburban cul-de-sac, but turned vertically. That's why all of the like units are different sizes and shapes, and it looks like it's made out of Jenga blocks. So yeah, we all call that the Jenga building. And I think this is a really cool perspective of it that you can get from this window. This is the north facing window, possibly the most popular window, because as you look up from this window, you will see all of our tall skyscrapers, including the Empire State Building, possibly the most iconic building in New York City because it's been featured in so many movies. And if you look off to the left, you will see the Hudson River, 
on the Hudson River, you will see Little Island. I actually got to go to opening day of Little Island. So you can check out my video about Little Island if you would like. And then just past Little Island, you will see Hudson Yards, which is home to yet another observation deck known as The Edge. As I was walking around, I found another tour ambassador. This is Phil. And I asked Phil, I wanted to know more about the original World Trade Center site. And is this building in the original footprints of the original Twin Towers or not? And the answer is no, not to the original Twin Towers. Uh, one thing that a lot of people don't realize is that the Twin Towers weren't all of the World Trade Center, right? The original World Trade Center had not two buildings, but seven. Uh, one and two were the Twin Towers. We also had three World Trade Center, which was a 20-story hotel. Four, five, and six World Trade Centers were nine-story office buildings, and seven World Trade Center was a 47-story office building. And alas, we did lose all of those buildings in the September 11th attacks, as well as three other buildings which were not part of the World Trade Center. Uh, the good news is we are rebuilding still, and we're almost finished, right? Not only have we rebuilt one World Trade Center, which of course is this building, which is amazing. We also have other amazing buildings that have been rebuilt. Uh, seven World Trade Center, as well as three and four World Trade Centers have been completed. Uh, we've also completed the Oculus, which is basically a big train station and mall underneath the entire World Trade Center site. We're, so we're all connected down there. And the biggest change between the original World Trade Center and our current World Trade Center is the huge Memorial Plaza and September 11th Museum right next door. Mm -hmm. And can you show us? Yeah, and this is a, a good thing. To, uh, I love this image because this is two maps. This is the original World Trade Center and this is the current and the future World Trade Center. Uh, we still do have a few buildings to build. Two World Trade Center uh, should get started soon. And then we also have five World Trade Centers. This has a question mark still. One thing that's uh, new news is that uh, although this was not part of the World Trade Center originally, it was part of the Bankers Trust building it was by bought by the Port Authority of New York and New Jersey but then it was sold uh, or is in the process of being sold I should say uh, to uh, Brookfield which is going to develop it as a condominium so it won't really be part of the new World Trade Center one of the other buildings we lost which is uh, under construction right now is the Shrine of St. Nicholas they moved it a little bit and it's going to look amazing you might be able to see it from up here and get a good photo of that which is really nice and it is on the way to becoming a, a really beautiful church there they're lining it. Uh, the facade is going to be really thinly sliced marble. You can shine a light through it. So the whole thing should glow. And I'm really excited to see that be finished. And mm -hmm. um, just as we're looking at this map, um, so I noticed that one World Trade Center looks like it's about where six World Trade Center was originally. That's right. Is that correct? That is correct. And a little bit of the Performing Arts Center uh, is going to be where the six World Trade Center is. It's another big change. Instead of having a hotel here, we're going to have a Performing Arts Center. This is going to be an amazing opportunity for a lot of performers from all over the world to come and show their best stuff here, here in Lower Manhattan, which doesn't really have <laughs> a really good Performing Arts Center. Yeah, but it will soon. So, like, all this stuff you can learn by coming to One World Observatory mm -hmm. and talking to the tour ambassadors like Phil and Emma and no other observatory in New York City has this resource. No. So, yeah. so we're the best part. That's what I say. This is so exciting. <laughs> so here we are at the Sky Portal, mm -hmm. which is actually video. It right? is. It is. It is video. And uh, it, is a, it is video of a camera that's just hanging right off the side of the building here. And one thing I love about this is how much kids love this. I was just earlier today watching a kid pretending to be Godzilla, stopping on all the, the cars there, which I think is kind of cute. <laughs> yeah, it's like not threatening. You're, you don't feel scared. You can tell it's a video. Mm -hmm. But like kids love it, babies love it. And, and it actually makes, I mean, I don't know if it'll come out in the video, but it like makes really fun like photos for social media. <laughs> So I actually like the sky portal, <laughs> as I lay here, <laughs> enjoying the sky portal. As you walk around the observatory, they actually have these letters on the ground to help you orient yourself. So right here you'll see W, that stands for West, that means you are looking out the west window. And if you're looking out the west window, that means you are looking at the great state of New Jersey. 
Now, sometimes people will say like, oh, One World Observatory, it's all enclosed. I want to be outside. Um, I actually love the fact that it's enclosed because that means it's climate controlled. It's like 95 degrees out today. We get to be nice and cool here. When it's raining or snowing, you can be warm inside of One World Observatory. And it means that you can like get these really fabulous photos leaning against the windows. So I see that as a bonus, the fact that it is all enclosed. And look at this view, it's so good. I'm back at the Southwest window, looking at the Statue of Liberty. I have gone full circle, 360 degrees of views of New York City at One World Observatory. I've talked to the tour ambassadors. I saw a City Pulse show. I had fun on the Sky Portal. And now the time has come to say goodbye to the Statue of Liberty. And we're gonna get ready to head back to the Sky Pods and head back down to ground level. We're getting ready to go on the Sky Pod down. Cool feature of the Sky Pod. On the way up, we saw the past. On the way down, we're going to see the future. We're going to see the future completed World Trade Center site. And you're gonna kind of feel like you're in Willy Wonka land as you're on the Sky Pod ride down. just completed our SkyPod ride. We have exited One World Observatory. When you exit One World Observatory, there's two ways to exit. One is ground level. The other is you end up in the Oculus, which is a really cool train station and shopping mall. Make sure that you hit subscribe so that you are the first to see my upcoming video on the Oculus. Now, is One World Observatory a tourist trap? I'm going to give that a hard no. Yes, lots of tourists come to One World Observatory because it's awesome. But I am a local. Every time I bring a local up to One World Observatory, they fall in love with the view and tell me that it's one of the best experiences that they have had in New York City. It's a great way of getting a new perspective of a city that you may have lived in your entire life. So I strongly, strongly, strongly recommend that you come downtown to Lower Manhattan to visit One World Observatory. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure if you visit that you tag me in your photo so I know that you came. Don't forget to hit subscribe and have a wonderful rest of your day. On my way out of the observatory, I ran into Julian, who works at One World Observatory, and he has some words about whether or not it's a tourist trap. Personally, I don't think it's a tourist trap, just because I go up there almost every day when I clock out, just to catch the view as the sun's setting. It's absolutely breathtaking every single time. And I always encourage my friends who live locally to come. If I have friends visiting from out of town, I always tell them, I live upstate, and I tell people to come down, just because it's that much worth it just to get that view at least one time. How many other people do you know that like they work someplace, they're there almost every day, and they're still like that stoked about their place of work? Not many, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> I know, it's so cool. So One World Observatory, not definitely, a tourist trap. Definitely not a tourist trap.